What's up guys? It's Marissa with Barely Keeping It Together and today I am giving you my 10 tips for staging your home. Now by far and away one of my most popular videos here on YouTube is all about staging your home and how to do it. I will link that video above but what I thought I would do is follow up today with more tips all about setting your home up for success in the staging process so that you can sell your home and get the most out of it when you're trying to you know get that highest price selling your home etc so let's get into my 10 tips for staging your home before we get into today's video please give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it because it helps me so much here on youtube and do not hesitate to subscribe to my channel as well otherwise stick around to the end of the video because my favorite tips are actually the last two tips that I'm giving you. So stick around to the end of the video and I can't wait to give you guys all the information to get your house on the market looking amazing and making top dollar. My first tip for staging your home for sale is basically a rule that you want to go by the entire time that you're staging your house and getting it ready for sale, which is your goal. Your overall goal here is to show prospective buyers how their life can be enhanced in your home. So what is it about your home that's going to make their life better? Go through everything with that mindset and you're gonna set yourself up for success in the staging process. Okay, tip number two is to remove any heavy drapes or window coverings because here's the thing, light and bright sells. Now, if you have light curtains that stay open into the side of the windows, that's totally fine, you can keep those. But if you have some big, heavy draperies, particularly something you bought in the 80s, 90s, or even the early 2000s when Tuscan was in, we're gonna get rid of that stuff so that everything just feels light and bright and not heavy and weighed down by those window coverings. So get rid of any old window coverings that are just feeling heavy in your space so that prospective buyers walk through and just feel like your home is light and bright. Now on that same note, tip number three is to clean your windows. Clean the outside and the inside of your windows while staging your home because it's going to increase the light factor that is coming into the space. Because if your windows are clean, the house is gonna seem cleaner, it's going to seem brighter, etc. Optional tip here. If you have screens on your windows, they actually make the room a little bit darker. And I know in these summer months, it can be great to keep those windows open and have screens on them and not have any bugs coming in the house. However, if you do take down the screens, it's also going to allow for more light in your house as well. So in terms of the windows, just think making everything super light and clean. So people walk in and feel like your house is a breath of fresh air rather than a dark dungeon or a cave because people are going to feel happier in lighter, brighter spaces. And therefore, when they look at your house, it's going to be another reason that this house enhances their life rather than detracts from their life. All right, the other thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you're touching up the paint on all of your trim. Now, if you have white painted windowsills and trim, that's great because that's the modern look and people are very drawn to that rather than older wood, etc. So I would go through and touch up all your paint so things don't look scuffed, worn, and dated because that's just signs that you have used and abused that house rather than it feeling like this new exciting place for somebody else to live. Now, if you do have wood trim throughout your house, please consider also potentially painting it white. It's gonna make your house feel so much more modern, bright, and up to date. Again, light and bright, right? Now, if you're opposed to this, I totally understand. Some people love wood and that's just their thing. So just make sure everything is very clean. But if you're interested, definitely consider painting all of your trim white or a very light, light cream because it's just gonna make your space feel much more current to this day and age. The next tip might seem a little bit obvious, but I need you to declutter. Just get rid of as much as possible and have your surfaces as clean as possible. It's going to make a space feel bigger. That being said, you can use a few accessories here and there just to kind of enhance how somebody would use a space. But for example, this behind me here, this is probably over accessorized for staging. I would probably take down the candle, take down these books, 
and just leaves this books in this bowl because then it would feel, you know, more open, etc. Now, my day-to-day -day life, it's much more practical for me to have those things there. So I totally understand that you live a certain way and then you stage your home for sale and you live in it another way as it's on the market. So just consider decluttering everything, particularly those kitchen countertops. That is a huge one, you guys. Put your appliances away when it comes to open houses, um, showings of prospective buyers, as well as photography. You don't want your coffee machine, your toaster, all those things out on the counter because it just makes it feel like and look like you have less counter space than you actually do. You don't want them thinking about how their stuff isn't gonna fit in this home. It wants to feel like the space is abundant and they're gonna have more than enough space for all the things that they're bringing into your home as well. The next thing that you can do to get the most bang for your buck when staging your house is make sure you are deep cleaning all of the nooks and crannies of your house. Nobody wants to be walking through and see little dust bunnies in the corner, etc. So what I want you to do is either do an incredibly thorough deep clean yourself or potentially even hire a cleaning service to come in and do a deep clean. You want to make sure you are scrubbing the front of your cabinets. You want to make sure you're scrubbing the backsplash. Nobody wants to see your kitchen grease and grime because it's going to remind them that they're going to make a mess in the kitchen too. Also, you want to make sure you're scrubbing all of the grout in your showers. Nobody wants to see mildew, that kind of thing. And, you know, just get all of the corners, the nooks and the crannies, because people are going to notice your mess, especially when it's decluttered. So make sure you do a super thorough deep clean. And then as showings are coming, you're doing more open houses, you continue cleaning throughout the process as well. This one is majorly overlooked, but what I want you to do is take out all of your light bulbs throughout the space and have them match. Because over the years, you've probably replaced light bulbs, etc. And you know, you have this one, which is like a warmer, this one, which is a cooler. So what I want you to do is take out all of your light bulbs, head to your local store, jump on Amazon. I'll actually link some great options down in the description below. But what I want you to do is get four to 5,000 Calvins of light for all of your light bulbs and put them throughout the entire space. The space is going to seem light and bright and airy. It's not gonna be too warm. It's not gonna be too cool. It's just gonna be like the perfect temperature and everything's gonna seem consistent because when you walk through the house and let's say you have, you know, 10 can lights in your kitchen or something and some are warm, some are cool. It just gives this like not finished feel where we want your house to feel like it is a show home and they just can't wait to put in an offer for full ask or maybe even more because they need your house to be their new house. So go out, get those light bulbs and replace everything you have right now. Okay, my next tip is a really good one. And here's what it is, is you need to go throughout your house and you need to show people how to use all of the spaces. So is there an empty room? Is there an empty nook that's not really showing somebody how they could use the space? I want you to stage it and define what the use of that space could be. By the way, bonus points in this post COVID world, people are looking for different types of home spaces. So home gyms and offices are huge and must have right now, because if we have to go and stay in our houses again, we wanna make sure we have all the spaces we need. So if you can find a nook or a cranny to turn into, a, you know, you could just potentially even do a yoga mat and some weights on the floor, but then it shows potential buyers, oh, I could use this space to do my home workouts. And that doesn't cost too much if you guys don't already have those home workout supplies. You know, run to Marshalls, TJ Maxx, get a yoga mat, get a, some five pound weights and call it a day. Or you could put a small desk with a little chair like this, and it's going to look like, oh, this could be a potential corner where I could set up my home office if I need to work from home or if I've stayed working from home this whole time. You wanna define all those areas for people. Maybe there's a little corner in your kitchen that you could set up to bistro chairs and some coffee mugs, and then people will be like, this would be a cute place for me to have coffee in the morning. Or if you have a balcony off of the primary bedroom, that would be a perfect place to set up a little spot to have coffee in the mornings, those sorts of things. People love being showed how to use spaces. Now keep in mind, keep like least common denominator, assume nobody knows anything about your house and how they could live in your house. So you need to show them, this is how you use this space. This room is a dining room. You put a dining table and dining chairs. This room is the kitchen. Look, there's a bowl of fruit. 
those sorts of things. Make it very, very obvious to potential buyers how they're gonna use each space so that when they leave, they're daydreaming about your home, how they're gonna live in your home, and then they're gonna put in an offer on your home and you're gonna take that offer to the bank. Nobody wants to see signs of your family, who lives there, or particularly that they have pets. Because to a lot of people, pets look like they cause damage and smells, etc. So make sure when you're staging your home, you remove all signs of personalization of your family, including pictures, toy mess, and all signs that you have pets living in your house. So that when people are touring through your home, they just think this is a clean, crisp space that's going to be their new oasis, not your old mess. All right, my last tip for staging your house is to do all of the projects you have been putting off. Now, what do I mean by this? When you bought your house, whether it was one year ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, you bought it because you saw that it had potential for you and how you could live in it. Now, nobody does all of the projects that they've wanted to do, and this is your time to do it. Yes, it is a little bit sad because you're doing those projects for someone else, but you're doing those projects because you saw the potential in this home. So for example, in our last house before we left, we actually redid the primary bathroom by painting the vanities, getting a centerpiece and changing out the lights and mirrors. And it totally updated and refreshed that space because when we purchased that house, we saw that that bathroom had so much more potential and we we're able to show that to potential new buyers and it paid off in the end. So yes, it hurts that you don't get to live with these changes for a long time, but you are gonna live with them throughout the showing and closing process. So you'll get a little bit more enjoyment and you'll get the satisfaction of, oh, when I bought this house, I knew that this was some of the potential it had and now I'm bringing that to life. So go back, think through when you bought this house, what was the potential that you saw in it? And what are those projects that you put off? Because when you do those, those are check offs in what the buyer is gonna see in your house and it removes the projects for them. Because if somebody goes into your house and just sees a list of projects that they could do, it feels overwhelming. It doesn't feel like their life is gonna be easier by living in your house. And we need to elicit that feeling that their life is gonna be better and their life is gonna be easier by purchasing this house. And by doing those projects now for them, you're gonna get more offers and you're gonna be able to move on faster. So definitely do all of those projects that you have been putting off. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I love making this for you. I hope this information is super helpful for you. Now, don't forget to go and check out that other video that I made a while back now, all about staging your house. I've linked it down in the description below. Otherwise, I will chat with you guys later. Bye.